Hey, what's up guys? My name is Legacy and welcome to a UFC 3 video. A little different than what I've done before. This is more of a guide on how to use a certain fighter. And this certain fighter is also my favorite fighter in the game and that is Steven Wonderboy Thompson. So like I said in my other videos, I've been streaming lately. And I use Steven Wonderboy Thompson a lot in my streams. And I had, I've had a few people ask me, how do you use him so good? Like, you're really good with them. And I take a lot of pride in that because there's a lot of people who don't know how to use, a Steve, Steve, how to use Steven Wonderboy Thompson correctly. So what I'm going to do is going to kind of, I got a couple of cl uh, clips from a few fights that I did. To, and it's a really quick breakdown of how I play every fight and what I do. Anyway, so we're going to kind of jump right into the clip. See you in a second. So this is a fight between me and Mike Perry. I'm um, using Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Our opponent is using Mike Perry. So I'm look. I'm gonna be looking away this way a lot because I'm gonna be using this breakdown to kind of explain what's going on. So yeah, and you're gonna see a lot of these type of fighters in the welterweight division. They're gonna come out with Mike Perry, Steven Wonderboy, uh, with um, uh, with Nick Diaz, with GSP, Tyron Woodley. Just come out and be like kind of crazy, you know, and just kind of throw everything they got at you in the first round. I love fighting these types of fighters. And anyway, so I'm gonna just gonna kind of go into this first few clips and show you what's going on. So I'm noticing for right there, if we go back a little bit, back to the first part, it's a lot of information really quick. And I'm gathering a lot already from this guy. So fake gloves touch me. He's not going to be cool about this anyway. And he's doing the same thing over and over again. He's doing the overhand followed by three hooks right afterwards. All right. And with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, the way I use him, I find the people's game plans and their patterns and I try to learn them as fast as possible, which you should do in this game anyway. But a lot of people don't. They just kind of brawl with them, uh, brawl with their opponent. I don't do that with Steve Wonderboy Thompson. I learn the game plan right away, and I start acting on it. So I'm noticing, as I back up a little bit again, same thing. It is overhand hook, 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 all right? That's a pattern, okay? And what you see me there, he's thrown this a few times now already. It's only been 15 seconds in. This is like the third time he's thrown it. I know, though, the second that he, I already figured out, by the time he throws that the other hook, He's going to back up. Boom. Now I know it's time to throw a knee. All right. Now I'm just learning his style. Okay. Get him off of me. Back him up so he can't do this. Now this is big as well. I know he's about to go for an overhand here. All right. So one thing I know, see one boy Thompson has a tool that can stop a lot of overhands right away. And it's his front. Um, uh, it's, his fr it's his front. It's his lead kick to the head. That's what it is. Um, a lot of people don't know it. it's a different animation later in the video don't get don't get me wrong I'm going to go into practice mode and show you all these uh, movesets that I use and um, You see right here. I know he's going for the overhand I'm gonna throw that kick out real quick It has a very special animation just snaps up there. It's not like a, it's not like a normal front lead kick to the head All right So but my game plan to see one by Thompson always is find the people's plan back up use movement make them waste their stamina all right, and then take shots only when I know I'm either going to land on a block or land to the body's, uh, to the opponent's body. All right, and see, that's what I'm doing. Watch this. I slip. All right, I'm learning the things. I know I can land that body kick. I'm slipping. All right, right there. I go for a knee because the knee, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's knee, if you look at it, it sways you back. All right, watch this very closely. As he comes in, I throw the knee and look at Stephen Wonderboy Thompson sway almost back and left, okay? Then that knee is perfectly there, as you can see, around the chin of Mike Perry, all right? So I'm gathering all this information. It has been one minute into this fight, and I already have this guy's tuning down, okay? And I know you can sit there and be like, well, legacy, I get it, cool, bro. But this, this literally is... One of the spamming players it doesn't it doesn't just work for the spamming players this works for people who are very technical fighters everyone has a pattern for the most part unless you're prioxis so i know he's gonna go for the overhand here i'm gonna throw this knee out boom drop him all right he gets back up so i'm gonna sway to the right one thing sway to the left sorry one thing about c1 boy thompson his movement when you lunge in different directions or sway out of the way like i just did he's very fast i believe he's got a 97 or 99 movement it's really quick so I have time. I don't know he's about to throw an overhand here. I know he's going to throw an overhand, but I don't know when exactly he's going to throw it. I have time by the time when I see the dude's arm wrench over for an overhand. I have time and I'm like, I need to move because Steel One Boy's just that fast. Almost off a reaction, you can slip, 
and move out of the way that quickly just because of how quick Wonder Boy is. All right. So he throws that overhand. He whiffs. I'm open to two body shots. All right. And one thing I always do with Wonder Boy, I attack the body. It might not be big combos or big strikes over and over again, but I'm going to pat his body. I'm going to tap his body. All right. Because while he's sitting there wasting stamina with overhands and hooks and straights and jabs and stuff like that, he's losing stamina. But also, as I'm tapping the body with my sidekicks, my regular roundhouse kicks, or even my little jabs to the body, every time you hit to the body, your stamina goes down. All right? Your, your short-term stamina and your long-term stamina goes down, okay? So I attack there when I know I got an open shot, okay? So I use the push kick a lot, all right? So if you see here, he was getting a little too close for my liking. Getting a little bit too close, all right? And he's coming in. He's about to go crazy. So I use a sidekick to keep my opponents away from me. And I, will, and I will use this with either a jab sidekick like you'll see later or just a sidekick where I just need a little bit of room. If I need a lot of room, I'm going to use just the sidekick. If I need a little bit of room, I'm just going to use just the sidekick. If I need a lot of room, I'm going to be moving forward using the jab sidekick. All right? I just need a little room there. Again, I'm going to slip and boom. The fight is over because I was picking my shots and attacking when his stamina is low. When his stamina is low, when your stamina is low, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna take more damage than if your stamina is high. I know this might seem like common sense to some people, but to other people, they might not realize this. I will show you real quick, all right? Let me move my face cam. You see that right there? You look at the clock. If you look at my mouse cursor, it has been only a minute and a half into the fight. This man's body, I wish I had the footage, but this, I didn't hit this guy a lot. I think I landed maybe 20 strikes this round. But this man's body health at the end, when you look at the fight statistics, his health was literally like a sliver of what it used to be at the beginning of the fight. If he had this much health, his was here. All right. And I only threw like a few strikes. I didn't land that many strikes on him. I just landed strikes when high, when it was very, very um, uh, high damage because of low stamina. All right. So that's just from me picking my shots and it caused me to do all as much damage with two little hooks to the body cause me just to knock him out right there all right so the next part we're gonna get into the next couple of clips okay so i find nick diaz here and this is a good example of another thing that you might have to do nick diaz is a this is an example of a aggressive fighter who's not as predictable as just going through overhands and hooks okay so one thing you're gonna notice here right away nick diaz is way too close to me this is the point where we use the jab psychic, which pushes the opponent back a little bit more. Now, if you now if you're moving forward with him, let me move this over here. All right. Now, if you're moving forward as you do a jab and a psychic, it's going to move the opponent a lot more. So, as you see, I'm moving forward here. Give me a second. I'm moving forward and throw a jab psychic. It launches the opponent back. All right. But here, this opponent is not as predictable. As just using overhands and uh, hooks he's just gonna come at me it's a lot of his combos are a lot of different things you got a jab lead hook lead uh, and a straight all right they got a bunch of like the death combo which is straight lead hook rear uppercut he's just throwing these things over and over again all right now watch this I'm still getting hit all right I'm moving backwards I'm still getting hit but look how many strikes he has thrown within a matter of about five seconds okay so this is a little different. These these games that I just showed you with this kind of player, I'm going to take a little damage, and I'm aware of that. I'm still getting better when it comes to mastering Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. All right, I will say this: I feel confident that I'm one of the better Stephen Wonderboy Thompsons in the game. Okay, I would say top five, honestly, and that's how that's how comfortable and how confident I am with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Okay. I might lose round one, two, and three because of the output and the damage they're putting on me, all right? But later on in the next clips, you're gonna see what happens to these fighters once they, um, uh, when it goes from round one to round two to round three, okay? And they're gonna show you a GSP here. We get a GSP here, and this, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the stamina here, watch my cursor. This is GSP stamina. This is after just one round. This is the beginning of the second round. This GSP was doing the exact same thing as the Nick Diaz fighter was, okay? So he was just coming at me with different combos, not as predictable, so it was a little harder for me to get his game plan down and counter him as well. So he's sitting here. This is GSP stamina. This is Wonder Boy stamina. There should never, if you're using GSP correctly, there is never a time 
for you to have lower stamina, especially against a Steve Wonderboy player, all right? As GSP, you should always probably have more stamina than all, all the other fighters. That's my honest opinion, honestly, if you're using GSP correctly. This is one round. Now you're sitting there like, okay, I get it, Legacy. That's a stamina difference, all right? I get it. He's not... He, that's not that much. What's the big deal? Okay, cool. Watch this, all right? So we're going to skip through this a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. So I got kind of a pre-made video here so I can go through all this. All right, cool. Sweet. All right, next round starts. Same thing happens. My game plan is still the same, okay? Except this time, by the second round, you're going to start to learn these guys' styles and their patterns a little bit more. This is the beginning of the third round. Now look at that stamina difference. GSP has about half stamina here, okay? I still have three quarters of it, okay? And by this time, I'm already attacking his body quite a bit, that his stamina and his body health has gone down tremendously, all right? So as we skip through here a little bit more, get past this part. So watch this. This is this the beginning of the round, right? All right? So he hasn't lost any stamina. He's still about at a half stamina, okay? We go a little bit, and I'm just still tapping his body. Boom, tacking his body, tacking his body. And at this point, when I have this much stamina compared to the other fighter, this is where I start to open up Wonder Boy. This is now, I stop being a little so docile and counter striking. This is when my game plan takes full effect. In a perfect game, in a perfect fight, this is what happens. And this is how you should do it, Wonder Boy. And this is how it really honestly is, okay? Because a lot of these guys, by the time their third round hits and they have no stamina, that's when they start to become more docile, all right? I always say in the first two to three rounds, match patience with patience. So if your opponent's being really patient, you're using Wonder Boy. You're supposed to counter strike. Be patient with that guy, okay? Match his patience, if not a little more so, okay? But by the time you get to third, four, and five, round three, four, and five, these guys are going to have little to no stamina while you're still sitting here with a quarter, of, a, uh, three quarters of your stamina left. Now they are scared. They're trying everything in their power not to get hit by combos. This is where my combos with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson comes out. Okay, I still don't throw anything crazy though. I never throw five, five, uh, five strike combos. It's still just maybe three at the most. But most of it's just like I'm still going to tap you, but just more often and more aggressively. Okay, so we get here. And this is, and I'm going to show you again, a big difference between this already, all right, even with this opening thing. Normally, if you saw my, um, uh, the Mike Perry, I'm throwing two or three strikes at a time and then getting out of dodge, all right? Now, look at this, though. I'm confident now. Boom, sidekick, all right? Body kick, all right? Sidekick, all right? Those sidekicks don't do a lot of damage, but they add up over time, all right? But the thing is, I would never do this in the first three, in the first two rounds, that is dangerous to do that in the first two rounds of Wonder Boy, in my opinion. That's a lot of stamina to be lost. Stamina, stamina is pretty much Wonder Boy's game. All right, that's all I gotta say. Cool. So you go here. I'm throwing spinning back kicks now, and that actually rocks him. And this is, and you saw how much stamina he had at the beginning of the fight. This is 30 seconds into the into the third round. All right, 30 seconds. Now watch him after this after this kick rocks him that's how low his body health is by targeting his body okay now watch he's going to throw this kick gsp ladies and gentlemen after tw after 40 seconds into the last round is now officially gassed look how much stamina i have up here look how much stamina i have time for wonder boy to go to work this is where i start to have fun open up and do what i can to end the fight all right, I'm throwing. I'm starting to throw my crazy combos, my jab straight question mark kick. Okay, this is fun. I go back to the body because now he's worried about his head again. His head is damaged. Go back to the body, mix it up. Okay, go with my little rush, my little rush uh, combos with his jab straights. Okay, now I just keep on mixing up body strike again because now he's expecting me to go to the head. His head. I see that his head is damaged. That should be my priority, right? No, I keep on mixing up. Go to the bot body head. But head head you know what I'm saying I'm just doing trying to do things that are not predictable this GSP did did a really good job of defending himself a lot of times I'll find myself when I get people here in this situation and I rock them to the head now they're also worried that I'm thinking about going to the body as well okay I got a little flat here 
There we go. That's better. Tight. <laughs> but people are worried now because they have so many things to worry about. They're worried about their head. They're worried about their body. So this guy did a really good job not falling for my tricks, though. All right, because a lot of times what I would do, cool, their head is rocked. I'm going to start hitting their body, then go to the head. He did not fall for that. All right, he knew I was going to go for the um, I was going to hit the body a few times and go to the head. Okay, so just trying to mix it up. You'll find if you attack the head a little bit and then go to the body, they're not going to be expecting the body. All right, so after you rock the head, boom, boom, hit the head like two or three times, hit their block, take one to the body. Okay, because if their head health is low, their stamina is low. Their stamina is low. You're going to do more damage to the body, which might cause another rock. I end so many fights like this with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Well, I will rock them to the body. Cool. I rocked them to the body. What are they expecting? Probably another body shot, right? No. I throw a round ass kick right to the head. Ends the fight right there with a knockout. Okay. So this guy mix it up. Don't be predictable. So now I'm again. I'm just having fun at this point. I'm not. Not all my strikes are landing, but I'm just having fun. And then we get to this point. He, GSP is just waddling along, waddling along. Right here, I'm just filling out the range. This is why I throw this kick out, filling out the range, because I want to. Do, I don't want to be too far, but I don't want to be too close. Okay, so I throw this kick out. Boom, I'm at a good range. I see that. All right, I got him, his back against the cage. He doesn't want to come forward anymore. I got his back against the cage. I just threw a head kick. Why would he want to do that? Cool, awesome. At this point, I know GSP's block is gone. I know his head health is gone. His stamina is gone. He has no body health. Let's throw a spinning strike that I know is going to do a lot of damage and probably in this fight, which it does. Again, this though, this is very much a critical call and could be very dangerous if you don't do it correctly or if the other guy counters. I just know this guy is so worried about his body, he's probably not going to take the chance to duck something. Because if you duck while, say for example, a spinning back kick to the body, if you duck during a spinning back kick, that could be tremendously bad, okay? So, here, I feel confident. Spinning will kick to the head, fight is over. His block was up and everything. This is a very powerful strike. It had no block. The reason I was able to do everything I could with Wonder Boy in that last round, ladies and gentlemen, was because of this. I am still above half stamina in the third round while GSP has none. That I maybe in this round I probably used I have probably had this at the beginning of the round, and I went down to this. That is still so much stamina just in case if he takes me down or something. All right, because I already know GSP has no stamina to go to the ground. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my game plan pretty much with Steven Wonderboy Thompson. How I believe is the correct way to use him. Counter, head movement. Use your movement. Get out of the way of strikes. Let them waste their stamina and let them miss their strikes. All right? Now, in the next part of this video, I'm going to practice. I'm going to show you what I mean about why it's such so important for them to miss strikes and everything like that, go through all these strikes with you and how to actually use them and everything. So yeah, anyway guys, I'll see you in the next part. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next part of this video, okay? I might make this video into two parts, upload one on one day and the one on the next day. I'm not sure yet. I got a lot of UFC 3 videos to make because of the fight card that's coming up 235. So I might just upload this as two videos in the same day because the, my other part's already above 20 minutes. I don't want to go much past. I don't want to go past 30 minutes. That might be a little insane. But anyway, so what I'm doing here, I have good old Stephen Wonderboy Thompson here, okay? And we have a good fighter of George St. Pierre. So I'm going to explain a couple of things right in this part, what I, what I was trying to explain in the other part, but it's going to be easier to show it here, okay? So if we're going to put recording on, now I'm, as jo now I'm George St. Pierre, okay? So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a combo. I'm just going to throw a generic combo, maybe just a, for example, straight uppercut, uppercut. Okay, cool. Now, as he hits me with these strikes, not to my block, look how much stamina he loses. Not much, right? Okay, cool. He doesn't lose that much stamina. Now, watch as he hits me with the block. He loses us a little bit more, not really that much, though, okay? So, but now watch as I move out of range how much stamina he actually loses. That is an insane amount of stamina he is losing just by throwing three strikes, okay? Now, here's another thing. So half of his strikes that he threw were to my body, were actually connected on my body, or to my block, okay? And he threw maybe one or two combos that was a swing in the air. 
he's already down quite a bit in stamina if you already noticed by looking at a stamina bar all right and this is a good chance for me to explain why stamina is so important you have two types of stamina in this game you have long-term stamina and you have short-term stamina watch me as I play Steve as I use Steven Wonderboy all right I'm just gonna throw a jab out there all right you see the yellow bar go down that is my short-term stamina now behind the yellow bar though you're going to see something called long-term stamina which is your gray bar all right and this is what your short-term stamina will go back up to after your fighter stops throwing strikes okay now every time you throw amount of strikes or take amount of damage your overall stamina your long-term stamina is going to go down a little bit so this is my goal i'm not really worried about the short-term stamina yeah it's nice to get that down my long term my long term goal is to get their long term stamina to go down all right that's the one that they take back with them into the next round that's the one that really matters to me all right so again as they're swinging to my block they're going to lose a little bit of stamina all right i get that all right but now as i move out of the way boom 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 they're losing a lot of stamina so i'm going to use a lot of ways to get out of here If it means just them losing that much stamina, all right? Now, he threw about four combos right there, all right? And he th threw at nothing. If you're using Steven Wonderboy correctly, like I was trying to explain the last thing, I'm going to show you the tools in this video how you can do that. He's lost a lot of stamina already. This is a lot of stamina. Now, of course, we're taking long breaks in between, so it's like, okay, yeah, it's been a while. But in a fight, a fighter might do this within a minute period. He's already lost that much stamina in a minute, okay? So... Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you kind of the few tools of Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and explain what I was meaning, all right? Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, I also use him in two different ways. I also use both of his stances. You got his southpaw and his orthodox, all right? Either way doesn't really matter. I might go to a different stance to use a different technique, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you use them correctly, you should be good to go, all right? But the first strike, and my favorite strike that I use with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is the sidekick to the body. And, just, and it looks just like that. All right, so it doesn't do a lot it pushes him away a little bit also if you look at his body health It doesn't really do a lot either. All right, but that adds up over time the more you throw it trust me And also another thing I'm gonna do if you watch I put playback on So he's about to throw a strike All right now if you notice there I Hit him halfway through that combo. He still lose pretty much loses the same amount of stamina he would lose in the middle of that combo all right if he threw that combo anyway he's going to lose about that same amount of stamina and that's my point with this start of this kick to either manage distance get them a little get them away from me if they're getting a little too close get them away that create distance for myself to throw strikes or to interrupt their own combos okay all right so another thing so you saw when i hit him with a normal sidekick he didn't move that much right all right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna if you walk forward with Wonder Boy and then you throw the sidekick, it's going to launch you back a lot further. The distance, in, uh, the difference in distance that he travels with the different types of sidekicks is a big difference, okay? Now, one thing I might do, I might come in and throw a jab sidekick, okay? Now, to throw a jab sidekick, you have to be very quick with it. You have to throw the jab and the sidekick almost instantly afterwards. That or the sidekick will not come out. You didn't do it fast enough. All right, and to throw... The sidekick, what you're going to do on Xbox, you're going to hold the left trigger, the right bumper, and then A. All right? If you're in Orthodox, the left trigger, right bumper, and then A. If you're in Southpaw, it's pretty much the exact same thing, except it's going to be left trigger, right bumper, B. All right? Now, again, with the, with the, with the jab sidekick, it's pretty much going to be the exact same thing except you're adding a jab in there. For PlayStation, it's just going to be L2, R1, and then um, X, okay? And then you reverse it, and it's just going to be L2, R1, and circle, okay? All right, and on to the next trick I like to use is the spinning back kick to the body. And what it looks like is just simply this. What it does, it does quite a bit of damage to the body. It does pretty good, all right? But also creates distance. Now you have to be careful though, because it does cost quite a bit of stamina. So if you're too far back and you throw it, you're gonna lose quite a bit of stamina. But now if you're too close, as you see, it's not gonna do any pushback. You're gonna lose a lot of stamina because it didn't land correctly. Also, it didn't do any damage to them, all right? But how you throw the spinning back kick to the body is gonna be 
left trigger, RB, and B if you're an orthodox. Now, if you are in southpaw and it's going to look like this, that button input is going to be LT, RB, and A. All right, and then for PlayStation, what it's going to be is when you're orthodox, it is going to be L2, R1, and circle. When you're in southpaw, it's going to be L2, R1, and X. Now, another trick I like to use for distance management is the lead head kick. Now, look at this. You see how different the animation looks than the normal head kick? This is what a normal head kick looks like, all right? Pretty much for the most part. It's a big strike that sways over far, all right? No, Steve Wonder Boy's head kick is very quick, and it just snaps up there. Boom, all right? I use this mostly for distance management, and if they're going to throw a big strike, okay? So if we can get this correctly, I'm going to have GSP throw an overhand. All right, cool. Now we have GSP throw an overhand here. Now we're going to throw a head kick when he's about to throw it. All right, you see how I intercepted that like mid, mid term? I am stopping his, his overhand right there, and it's doing a pretty good decent amount of damage to his head and also wasting his stamina. All right, and that's the big point where I use that kick, either if they're throwing a body kick or they're, thro or they're throwing an overhand. And easily, easy, easy how you just throw it. If you are in orthodox, it's just going to be LB and A, all right? And then if you're in southpaw, it's just going to be LB and B. Now, for orthodox on PlayStation, it's just going to be L1 and X. If you're in southpaw, it's going to be L1 and circle, all right? Easy day. Now, by this point, it's been two to three rounds of me just working their body. Of course, I'm just throwing also body kicks out there. This is pretty easy. I hope everyone knows how to throw a body kick. All right, but the big time when I start to throw these body kicks is when they're expecting this side kick. So even if the opponent is blocking, all right, you'll notice as I throw a side kick, it still pushes them back, all right? People are going to still get, people are going to get discouraged of this. So what they're going to do, they're going to start swaying out of the way, all right? Swaying out of the way and swaying out of the way. You see that all the time. So what I like to do when I know they're about to sway out of the way, I'm going to do my, my thing. I'm going to throw a jab body kick all right and it intercepts it or if i know they're about to do this i'm going to throw an inside kick or an outside kick all right that does a lot of damage if you kick them to the body as they're swaying okay as they're lunging out of the way and you'll find fighters as you throw that side kick a lot they start to do that a lot more all right so that's when i use the body kicks like that now the next part is it's been two to three rounds you're in the third or fourth round now you have gsp or whoever you're fighting at low stamina this is where I like to throw combos, like the jab, straight, question mark, kick, like so. And how you throw that combo is very easy. All you have to do is do the jab. If you're an orthodox, it's X, followed by Y. And then what you're going to do, you're going to hold down RB, and then just press B. All right, you have to do this in quick succession, and it's going to look like this. So I only normally play, use the strike in orthodox. All right, so I'm not going to give you the southpaw thing for it. Southpaw is easy, it's just the opposite pretty much. But for PlayStation, what's going to be, it's going to be square, triangle, R1, and then circle, okay? Now, another thing I'm going to do, now they're now they're all nice and tired, I'm going to do a bunch of different things now. All right, see, Wonderboy Thompson has a very special Russian animation. Now, watch this. As I come in, look almost as he's leaning forward as he's coming in with these straights and jabs, Okay. Now, this is something that he actually does in real life. He'll come straight in, boom, 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 all right? It looks different than this, a normal jab straight. This is a normal jab straight. This is his special Russian jab straight. It's a lot faster, okay? And you cover quite a bit of distance when you're using it. I just use this when I get, want to get a quick, a quick few jabs, a quick few strikes in there, okay? And this is easy, nothing special to use. All you gotta do is just get be at a certain distance and just start throwing jab straights. Real quick, real quick this is about to be the last one before I forget. I'm also gonna show you how to use knees with Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Very, very easy, all right? So we got two different strikes that the knees actually take place of when you get close enough, all right? The first knee takes place of the teep kick, all right? And what you're gonna do, you're gonna get up close, hold down the left trigger, R, B, and then press B, all right? Now, if you're a di certain distance, the teep kick comes out, but the second you get within knee range, that knee's going to come out instead, all right? Now you know our little side kick, though, as well. It looks like this. And if you get close enough, instead, we're going to do when you hit that button layout, you're going to get a front knee, okay? And this is how I actually countered that Mike Perry. He's going to throw in the overhand, and I threw it. You see how Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's head almost moves back into the left, like I was saying. 
This is how I got him with that, okay? That's how you throw it. And for PlayStation, it's very easy. Just kind of mimic my side, uh, my side kick with it. Just be very close. But for those who don't know how to throw the teep kick, I'm going to explain it. So what you're going to do, you're going to go, you're going to hold LT, RB, and B. And then for your PlayStation users, it's going to be L2, L1, and then circle. And that's about it. I got a really tired Steve One Boy Thompson here and a very tired Jordan St. Pierre. But that's going to be about it for this part of the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to bring me an end to this guy. This is the first time I made this kind of video. Um, I really hope you all enjoy. Maybe you learn a thing or two. I know this probably wasn't my best video I've made. I still got a lot of learning when it comes to actually teaching people how to play this game. But I feel like I do have a, enough knowledge and a lot of knowledge. I could show some people who don't know how to play the game very well or don't know a few things. Maybe I could teach them a thing or two. Maybe help them get better of a certain character or a certain fighter or just in the game in general. I'm about to go through editing and see if there's anything I can fix, take out, make shorter or whatever. If you guys have any feedback on how I can make these videos better, please let me know down below. Um, if you like the video, leave a like. It makes me know that I, you might want more of these videos. Maybe I did good, did do a good job and you want more of them. Just let me know. Anyway, guys, it's been Legacy, and I'll see you in the next one.